and this is a case for discussion. We've deliberately selected an example with malaria that is outside of immunization, even if today there is a vaccine uh, for, uh, for malaria. So the situation is the following. Imagine you are treating a child with malaria in your community. And let's see how root cause analysis can help us solve the real problem, not just the symptoms. So what's step one, Charlotte? So step one is you give a child uh, anti-malarial medication and then the fever goes down and the child feels better and you're happy with that. But a month later, the same child is back with malaria again. And indeed, and so step two, you try a quick fix. You think, well, maybe the medication wasn't strong enough, so you give a stronger dose. Again, the child gets better but returns with malaria a few weeks later. So this is where we're going to turn to the health leaders in our Zoom studio. You can also participate if you are uh, watching via YouTube or LinkedIn or uh, X Twitter. What would you do in this situation? So we're going to turn, we're going to lower all hands and ask you, we'll see. And we will be asking you questions like this during the collaborative exercises. Don't forget to introduce yourself. Yes, uh, Busayako Akomolafe, the floor is yours. In the face of this situation, You've tried the quick fix. It did not work. What do you do? But first, introduce yourself. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I did that earlier on. I'm Dr. Kamalave Busayo from uh, Goodwa Local Government of your state. I work with the primary care board. Yeah, in this scenario, um, root cause analysis comes to mind. And um, the first question you ask is, uh, does this family sleep on the um, insecticide-treated net? Uh, that's the first question you ask because... Um, if that is not in place, it doesn't matter how long, uh, how, how many times you treat them, as long as the child is still exposed to mosquito bite, he or she will keep coming down to um, to have uh, malaria. And that's one. And then two, um, you ask prevention, you, if you know the age of the, the child to be within the, um, below five, you ask the question if he has been exposed to what we call XMC, um, which is seasonal malaria uh, chemo prevention which is um, a, 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 a regime of drug, um, SP and um, amodiaquin that is being given to um, children of that age, um, at especially the peak season of um, rainy season when malaria is at its um, maximum as this peak. And um, so those are the questions you ask. Um, then now, you, if you want to come in with the issue of mal- um, uh, malaria vaccine, and then you can ask the question, what if you have, uh, what if you as a parent have something that your child can take that will permanently um, immunize the child from coming down with this uh, malaria infection. And that's when that's where the ma- uh, malaria vaccine comes in. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. So these are very legitimate questions. However, they are not root cause analysis questions. And we're going to now with Charlotte go to step three. Uh, yes, Reda. So step three is that realization that there is a deeper problem. And now you're thinking, why does this child keep getting malaria? And that is where root cause analysis starts. And of course, Busayo's questions are very legitimate. They are undoubtedly correct questions to ask. But root cause analysis is simpler. You just ask why. Regardless of how much or how you, little you know about malaria, you just keep asking why five times. After you've asked five times, you usually get to uh, uncover something that is much closer to the root cause than where you started out. And what's step four, Charlotte? So you ask the mother, why do you think your child keeps getting malaria? And she responds, it's normal. Many children in our village get malaria often. And that takes us to uh, whoops, step five, where we ask why so, for the second time, Charlotte. Yeah, you need to dig deeper, asking why are so many children in your village getting malaria? Then the mother replies, there are many mosquitoes near our homes. So what happens when we ask why for the third time? And again, you take the input, what the mother said, and you ask why. Why are there so many mosquitoes near your homes? She says, there is stagnant water all around our village. And this is where we're getting closer to the root, where we are asking why for the fourth time. What happens then, Charlotte? 
See, why is there stagnant water around the village? The mother says the drainage systems are blocked and broken. And one more time, Charlotte, what do you ask and what's the response? You ask one more, why are the drainage systems blocked and broken? She responds, no one has maintained them for years. And this gets us to the root cause where now you see the real problem. And the root cause in this case, there are probably other causes and there, it is undoubtedly more complicated than this, but this is an example. It turns out that poor drainage ma maintenance is leading to mosquito breeding grounds causing repeated malaria cases. And so once you've asked why five times, what you find is very different from where you started out, regardless of how much or how little you know about malaria and the context of that, uh, of that particular community. So then, Charlotte, what does it mean to take effective actions for, on this example? So... It is instead of just treating the malaria symptoms, you can now decide to work with local leaders to organize drainage cleaning, you know, educate the community on mosquito control and do as uh, uh, Busayo uh, said earlier on m mosquito net. And that is usually the assumption. They are not sleeping on that bed net, but meanwhile, there is a, 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 a deeper problem. So, yeah, distribute bed net as an additional solution. Now, this is an example for malaria. In the Immunization Collaborative, we'll be focusing, of course, on immunization challenges. But we wanted to uh, show you this example. Uh, you may already be familiar with asking five whys as a method for root cause analysis, or you may not. But we hope this helps you understand how it is different from what our colleague Busayo Akomolafe, using his expertise, what he knows about malaria is different, is also useful, is also important, but is different from what we'll be doing in this exercise. We'll be focusing on root cause analysis. So let me check if there are questions or uh, comments, uh, Charlotte, do you see? Uh, all right, and I see there is, of course, we chose malaria that is not by accident. We knew that this would uh, resonate with so many of you because it is, a, it is such a persistent uh, problem. Um, an anonymous participant says, this is a good system, the five whys, but how can you get much information if the mother is not ready to open up to you or provide you with information? Then I would say maybe that is your root cause analysis, is why is she not ready to open up to you or provide you with much information? and I'm not being facetious, I'm being very serious, then that is where you can start your root cause uh, analysis. So that is uh, a quick example, and we'll be starting on Monday, we'll be going into the actual exercise, working with you and encouraging you to work with each other.